Today's video is brought to you by URCD Keys, the best source for Windows 10 and Office Professional product keys at deeply discounted prices. More details at the end of the video. JRed comes in with a question regarding upgrades, and he is doing an impressive one. Thank you both for the info. I'm building my new PC. I'm going with a Ryzen 5950X RTX 3090, 32 gigs of RAM from an i7-8700K, 16 gigs of RAM, and the RTX 3090. Well, let's have a chat about RAM. First of all, let me be absolutely clear. There are people in 2021 who can functionally use 16 gigs not many, it's time to put that to bed, but you can, it's not the end of the world. However, he should definitely not. After all, your 3090 has 24 gigs of RAM and so that's just silly. You are also going from an 8700K, which is a six core, 12 thread chip, to a 5950X, which is a 16 core, 32 thread CPU. 16 gigs of RAM, which is what you have now, divided by six cores, is about 2.6 gigabytes per core. But programs are getting bigger, not smaller. You were happy with that, but almost four years ago, three years ago, four years ago, 2017, four years ago, you were happy with 2.6 gigabytes of RAM per core. Even if we go with a very modest three gigabytes of RAM per core, 16 cores times three is 48, not 32. Yep. And if you want your machine for the next four years, like your current one, you really should be looking at four gigabytes of RAM per core. So a Ryzen 7 5800X would be a 32 gig system, but a Ryzen 9 5950X would be a 64 gig system. And here's the blunt, honest truth. You're buying a $750 CPU. You have a $2,000 video card. The price difference between 32 gigs of RAM and 64 gigs of RAM right now is about 130 bucks. No, absolutely not. I, uh, that is the worst $130 savings I can think of at that level. Now to everybody else watching who goes, oh, tech's always recommending 64 gigs of RAM. I'm not the one who picked the 5950X here. I'm not the one who put the 3090 here. If you have a Ryzen 7 or an i7, if you've got a 3070 or a 6700 XT, 32 gigs would be the right choice. 64 would be kind of overkill for most people in that situation. But it, he's got nearly, between his cooler, his motherboard, his CPU, and his video card, he's over $3,000. Sure 130 is. bucks to go to 64 gigs of RAM is like no brainer city. That should be an easy choice. And if the reason you're not doing it, now I understand why he might not, because he's been on 16, 32 is double that, it seems like an upgrade. And mentally he's probably thinking, and I'm sure many of our viewers are thinking, oh, what do I need 64 for? We didn't say what he was doing with it. Uh, he's buying a 16 core chip. You wouldn't be buying a 16 core chip unless you wanted two things. Awesome, wonderful, incredible performance with more than one program running. You don't need a 16 core chip just to play games on a single monitor. That that really is kind of a waste of money. Second of all, so you can have multiple programs loaded. Correct. Probably multiple monitors. And he wants some future proofing because he wants to if he wants to keep this as long as he had the 8700K, well, you've yeah. got to think four years from now. Four years from now, Windows 10's retired. Windows 11, yep. the core counts are getting bigger. Programs are only going to get bigger. We're gonna have 32 core, 64 thread chips in that time, in that four year time frame. Mm -hmm. 64, DDR5 is coming that has far more memory per module than DDR4 did. It's four X the size on the same, same modules. Let me put this a different way. I am not a normal user. I, I acknowledge that I am a high end user. I run a lot of programs. I have everything open. I am not necessarily the most normal person on earth when it comes to PC use. I acknowledge that. My Ryzen 9 5950X is getting 128 gigs of RAM. Not that I recommend that for everybody, but that's the alternative. 64 is the base. 
for a 16 core machine. Well, it's called a balanced system at the end of the day. Make sure your system is balanced between cooling, RAM, storage. And make sure you have a really nice Gen 4 premium two terabyte boot drive on that thing. You will not want to run less than a two terabyte. That would be an excellent choice. A two terabyte Gen 4 drive for the next four years. Also, um, uh, those things are ranging around $300. So you're looking at $150 more to go from one to two terabyte. Again, $3,000 motherboard CPU and graphics card. Don't put Walmart tires on your Ferrari. Hopefully that helps. Awesome system. Enjoy it. But more RAM. I can hear the comment section already. My i5-8400 has 16 gigs and it plays Fortnite just fine. Tech's crazy. You know what? An i5-8400 with 16 gigs of RAM is just fine. I don't have a problem with that. Mm -hmm. What'd you say? Balance system? Yeah. Insert the Thanos gif. Uh, balance and all things. What does he say? Uh, all things perfectly balanced? All things, yep. Yeah, perfectly balanced. All right. Weasel. Although I did upgrade our media center PC at home. You remember that we have an i5-8400 mm -hmm. at home, which is our home theater PC. We did a whole build video on that. We did. It was built with 16 gigs of RAM. It has 32 in it now. I got tired of 16. You got tired of 16. I got tired of 16 because here's the thing. I, people just go, what do you need this for? What do you need this for? We get comments all the time from people who upgraded. Yes, occasionally there's comments from people who say, well, I didn't see much difference. I get a lot more comments from people who go, wow, I didn't know how RAM starved Windows was. It was making it work but there's making it work, and then there's really nice. So if I was using maybe 11 or 12 gigs of RAM active, according to Task Manager, I'm sure a lot of people look at that and go, well, psh, I'm not using my 16, I don't need to upgrade to 32. But so you upgrade to 32, and all of a sudden you've got 18 to 20 active, and you're like, but I didn't change what I was doing. No, Windows was lying to you, and it was hiding it. It was running RAM compression and disk swap and offloading things. Our Media Center PC doesn't do all that much. There's a couple of things running. I do have Backblaze running on it, although it usually just sits there idle, but it's running. Um, I do have downloading and sharing software and a few other things on there, but the minute you open more than one program on there, or if I have something transferring, or if I'm, if I'm like playing a video while I'm doing something else, the difference in system responsiveness and I'll often like have a web browser open and I'll alt-tab between the guys. I always, always leave Chrome open. Yes, I know Chrome sucks, but I do. You go, why does that need 32? It doesn't need 32. It does. People need to take the word need and just throw it in the trash can. I don't need a home theater PC. Just, so, so stop saying need. It's nicer on 32. It's a more pleasant user experience. Well, Ian here says his Epic system with two terabytes of DRAM complains that uh, an <sighs> SSD smaller than his DRAM because of the, the swap files don't fit. <laughs> God. Okay. That's... That, that's, that's Ian. That's... That's an Ian answer. Yeah, but he... Yeah. <sighs> URCD Keys is the best source for genuine Windows 10 and Office Professional product keys that work the first time, every time. Get 20% off normal prices using our discount code BST for Bite Size Tech and the link in the video description below. $15 gets you a Windows 10 Professional OEM key that is a real product key, activates directly with Microsoft, use it forever as it links to your Microsoft account and it works through reinstalls. Get a full copy of Office 2019 Professional Plus for about $50 that redeems at setup.office.com using your Microsoft account. It also works forever through reinstalls. We have been using URCD keys for almost three years now and recommend you do so as well.